Hey guys, and welcome to this next episode of Photography Tips. Today, I'm going to be talking about five ways to market your photography business successfully, and hopefully in turn, that will help you book more clients and get you on your feet. So let's talk about it. that I'm gonna talk about is social media. This is like a love-hate relationship with all of us, but it is such a good free tool to market yourself. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. Instagram. Okay, <laughs> I seriously have a love-hate relationship with this app. Um, it is so good in the fact that most of my clients that I book come through Instagram. That is such an important statistic. Because Instagram is such a picture-driven application where it's basically just photo sharing and based on how many likes you get and how viral your photo goes, that is a huge tool to give you a new audience and to get more followers or get those new eyes, those new brides seeing your work. So even though we may hate Instagram, it really is a good app to have and to be utilizing. A couple of ways to get more eyes and get more, I guess, people seeing your work is feature accounts. Okay, like I said, I have a love-hate relationship with Instagram and feature accounts can be very selective, but if you have that one photo that you are just so pumped on and you think it is one of the best things that you've ever taken, you just feel so hot about it, then you should tag as many feature accounts as you can. Because if one of those feature accounts picks up your photo, that's gonna be a bunch of brand new followers coming and giving you some traction on that photo. Now, while it may be photographers coming and following you and not necessarily brides, what's happening is when those photographers like your work or give you more follows, that's gonna give you a wider range of people to see your photos because they'll start seeing it on the explore page because it has a lot of likes, it's trending, you know, whatever it may be, it's gonna get you on that explore page and I've honestly had a couple of brides find me just from the explore page because my one of my photos went kind of mini viral. So, that goes without saying, feature accounts are great, but don't make that the heart of your business. Meaning when you're on a shoot, don't, you know, take the picture and think, oh my gosh, this is totally a feature, you know. Well, that's great and maybe fun for you, it's not about you, it's about the client in the end. Just be wary of that, but feature accounts are a great way to get more traction on Instagram. The second thing is um, friends that you have um, in your personal account. So I know there's a lot of discussion of, oh, do I start a business account or do I keep my personal and turn it into my business account and just post all my work on my personal? I'm gonna tell you what I did and what worked for me. I basically put all of my photos on my personal account. I really don't have very many like personal photos that I post, but I do talk personally in my captions. So people still know what's happening, but they also see my work. This has really helped me because a lot of my friends are starting to see my work as a photographer and because a lot of them are getting married now, it's really great because they're seeing, hey, she's a photographer now, I already know her, I'm gonna reach out and see what her prices are for her weddings. Bada boom, bada bing, you got more clients. So I'm a huge fan of making your personal account your business account as well um, and just using your brand name and your name, if it's, you know, you know, Danny Purrington Photography, if that's your name, use that. Use that as your Instagram. I am totally all for that. But I've seen it go good both ways, so it's really up to you. Um, but all of the friends that you have currently following your personal account could turn into potential clients once they get married. Another great thing with Instagram is to always post new content. Um, if you post the same session in a row, I guess, on your 9grid, people are going to see, oh, well, okay, we've already seen that session, it's not that great like to see another photo. Always post new content and something that's exciting. Um, if you're posting an okay photo that you're not totally stoked on but you feel like you have to post because you post every day, don't do it. Only post when you have a really good photo and if it's a new content, new session that you're posting because it's more likely going to get you more likes because it's new and it's a, it's a photo you're really excited about so I guarantee someone else is going to be really excited about it too. And then I 
like to use apps to kind of organize my photos, so I use Planoli. I'm going to link to it in the description. It's a great app. Um, it does have a subscription month monthly for as many photos as you want to upload, but you can upload, I think, 30 for free per month. So. It's a great way to kind of plan out your nine grid, see what works together. And I hate saying this, like, oh my gosh, well that's so extra and it doesn't matter. But it kind of does. Um, when followers come to your page, you want to automatically give them that first impression that you are really cool. And if you have the same session, again, in each like row and it's like planned that way where it's not really cohesive and your editing style is kind of off and you have a bunch of close-up pictures and no like far away pictures, it's not showing your range as a photographer. So really, really sell yourself, you know? Make sure that you plan out your grid and while it may be a little extra, I'm totally a fan of this because it's your first impression that people are gonna get when they come to your page. The last thing you can do with Instagram, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, but I guess the last thing I'm gonna talk about is tagging, geotagging, hashtagging, tagging your photos. You know, tag that dress vendor, tag, you know, the florist, tag whoever you can in your photos because I guarantee you that vendor may repost your photo, they may like you, they may follow you, you know, if they don't know who you are, and that's great traction as well. So, tag, use strategic hashtags if you're, you know, doing a shoot in the desert and you want to travel. Put, you know, Arizona wedding photographer because Arizona's a desert. Or um, if you're in the mountains in California and you want to go north like me, then you put like Oregon wedding photographer, Washington wedding photographer, and then honestly, that's gonna get you people who are looking for you. People are searching hashtags and they're looking in their search bar for specific photographers in their area. So while you may not live in Oregon or Washington, but you wanna do more work up there, if you're hashtagging it, I guarantee you someone's gonna see your work and they may just reach out to you. It's happened to me a couple of times and it's awesome. Okay, social media, we're going back. Facebook is great. Um, I think Facebook is dying a little bit for business, but you should have a business page for people to find you. You know, there are some people that still use Facebook to find vendors. Um, so definitely utilize it. Make sure you have a business page. Um, and then also share things to your Facebook page, but don't make it the same as Instagram. So one of the ways that I've seen strategic, I guess, planning with the social media is posting one thing to Instagram and then saying, hey, go over to my Facebook page to read more about this or to check out the blog or something. And then you post something completely different to Facebook where people on Instagram feel like they're missing out and they have to go to Facebook to see it then they're more likely gonna go to your page and it's just more marketing, honestly, for you and more traction on both accounts. I'm not a huge fan of paid ads. They honestly haven't worked for me and I'm just being honest here. Um, I think you're gonna get more traction with organic, plus you're not spending money and that's another expense that you have to worry about. So uh, stick to organic stuff, it's really helped me and just be strategic with what you post. The second thing that you can do to market yourself in your new business, or I guess your already established photography business, is your website and SEO that you can use with your website. So SEO means search engine optimization, if you don't know, and basically it's an algorithm that Google, Yahoo, Bing, like all of them use to bring the best results for you know user searches. So for example, if someone puts in the search bar, okay, uh, organ wedding photographer, cheap, you know, I mean, hopefully they're not searching for cheap photographers, but say that's a keyword. Okay, you want to make sure that you show up on that first page of Google because no one goes to the second page. Sorry, but you want to make sure that you're there. So how do you get there? Okay, let's talk about it. SEO is a beast. Um, I'm just going to start with that. It requires a lot of research, um, but I'm going to give you a couple of tips to help you because SEO is really important. One way to get really good SEO is through your blogs. Now, you can just post photos and no words or paragraphs and your blog and then that's kind of like your journal on your website, but I recommend not doing that. I recommend using words. You need to have at least 500 words on your blog for Google to send its little spiders out, and I'm serious, they're called spiders, and they crawl your site, making sure that, okay, Here's a keyword, here's a keyword, okay, Oregon, uh, she shot here in, you know, Crater Lake, or, you know, something where it tags that, and that's a word that that user searched for, and so it may show up on that first page. Honestly, I'm not a good writer, I just write what's on my heart, and I kind of just put it out there, and it's worked well for me, so 
Um, make sure you have over 500 words. Make sure you're tagging your blog. So you're putting an Oregon wedding photographer. If you shot at Crater Lake, make sure you're tagging Crater Lake. Um, if it's an engagement, you know, make sure you're tagging that as well. Another way to really, really boost your SEO is through your titles. Make sure you have relevant titles. So don't put, okay, um, Cody and Kristen, you know, Big Bear Lake, you know? No, like say something really cool that someone would look for. Okay, um, whimsical, enga whimsical Oregon engagement at Crater Lake and then put the names if you want to put the name of the couple. But make sure you have that as your first thing in the title because that's what's going to get you on the first page. You want to make sure you have that and you have your key words that you want you know, to be showing up on Google. Make sure you have that in the title. So I want to be an Oregon wedding photographer. I'm going to put whimsical Oregon engagement at Crater Lake, making sure, okay, so this was in Oregon. It's an engagement. It's at Crater Lake. So, you know, if someone is trying to get inspiration, they may come across your blog. Awesome. Then they've already found you and they may reach out to you. So tagging um, titles are really important and making sure you have over 500 words. Make sure there are words on your website. <laughs> I know you're a photographer and it's so tempting to just have photos, but I'm telling you right now that having words is so much more valuable. Um, also making sure you link out your photos if you're sharing something and having outbound links to other vendors, having you know more inbound links is also really good. For example, if you share the blog on your social media, that's gonna help with your SEO, believe it or not, because that's an inbound link for someone to go directly to your website. And so that's gonna help uh, with your page SEO. The third thing you can do to market yourself is in-person referrals. You can do this at weddings, and I've kind of already talked about this in five ways to book more wedding clients. Um, but basically just make sure you're really friendly, you're really friendly with the family, you're going into that wedding ready to book the cousin who's engaged. And then also talking to wedding vendors at weddings. I know this is kind of like a no-brainer, but we really don't think about it. Wedding vendors are always looking for more pur more purple. <laughs> Wedding vendors are always looking for more people to refer because it, you know, makes them look good in the business. They're referring people that they want to work with. Make sure you're really friendly with the wedding vendors. You share your photos with them. They can market that as well, market their work with your photos because you're the one capturing the day. Of course, they're going to want their work, something to display on their website. And then in turn, they will tag you. They'll make sure that they're giving you credit. Um, and if they're not, make sure they're giving you credit. Yeah. <laughs> so the fourth thing you can do, and this kind of goes along with the third point, is wedding coordinators. So if there is any wedding vendor to reach out to, it is a wedding coordinator because they are going to be the people to refer you the most. If you want to be a destination wedding photographer or you just want to shoot more in a certain location, so for me, like I want to shoot more north, obviously. So I am going to reach out to Oregon wedding planners. I'm going to reach out to uh, Washington wedding planners and say, hey, I'm a California-based wedding photographer. I, you know, love your style. Also make sure that they're your style. You know, pick a coordinator that has a similar style to you. Um, but reach out and be like, hey, I'm a California wedding photographer. I'm looking for more Oregon weddings. I would love to be on your referral list. Here's a list of my work or, you know, here's my website. Check out this blog. Um, you know, I'm willing to offer travel discounts, which is important because, you know, you want to make sure you have a decent price and not something that's totally out of the water. Um, and then, you know, that wedding coordinator is more likely going to respond back to you and be like, hey, thanks so much for reaching out. We would love to put you on our referral list. We're always looking for more referrals. There you go. You might get more weddings. I've already had a couple of referrals from other coordinators I know up north, and it's really helped me. So don't be afraid to reach out to those coordinators and you know get your foot in the door with them in that area. And then once you hit it off with that coordinator, you get, they're gonna get more referrals. It's just gonna happen. Okay, and the fifth thing is getting published. We all wanna be published on June Bug Weddings, you know, green wedding shoes, style me pretty, whatever it is. And there's going to be a lot of rejection. I'm just telling you right now, um, they're not going to accept every blog. And even though it may be something you're so excited about, it may not be something that they're looking for at that exact time. So you want to make sure you're just submitting as much as you can because the one blog that you may think won't get published probably might get published. And if that's the case, awesome. But you'll never know unless you start submitting your stuff. So I highly recommend submitting to as many blogs as you can, making sure that you're getting your work out there. 
And I promise you, the more you submit, the more that those, you know, coordinators or those people that are getting those submissions see your name, they're gonna start noticing your work a little more because you're really passionate about submitting your stuff to them. Getting published on something like Junebug Weddings is awesome because so many brides are on Junebug Weddings. I promise you, if you get published once, like, you will get so many inquiries all at once because brides are on Junebug. They're looking at that for inspiration and then, oh, I love this photographer's work. This blog is beautiful. You know, they're gonna wanna know who that photographer is and they're gonna reach out, I promise. I hope that helps. Um, those are just five ways that you can start marketing yourself as a photographer and in the wedding business. Um, it is a bit of a saturated market and sometimes it is hard to stand out. But if you keep to it and you're really passionate about it, um, and you find your little niche or niche, whatever, and whenever you find that little niche that you're in, own it. Just own it to the max and market it as much as possible because that's how you're gonna be a full-time wedding photographer and be successful. I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure to subscribe. Um, leave comments below what you think, what you wanna see more of, if you have any questions. Um, I would love to answer you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or you can message me on Instagram. I do check my DMs. I do get a little lost sometimes just because there's a lot, but if you reach out, I promise I will respond. Thanks again, and that's it.